Well, 20 years ago, a business satellite phone cost $10,000. It weighed 70 kilos and provided calls at $10 a minute. Well, today the latest models retail for around $500, weighing 300 grams and charging calls at about 75 cents a minute. One person who's seen the industry grow and evolve is Todd McDonnell, CEO and founder of TC Communications. Todd, welcome to the program. Thanks for Tech Report. Um, tell us how you've seen the satellite communications market change in the past. 20 years, say, those, comparing those figures that we just mentioned. Yeah, well, certainly uh, we used to see uh, two suitcases, each weighing about 32 kilos, and a generator to run them, and uh, somebody who knew a little bit about what they were doing to put it all together just to be able to get on the telephone. Mm. And, uh, and now the technology, of course, is, is slightly bigger than perhaps today's normal mobile phone. So the, the size has changed dramatically. And uh, as you mentioned already, the operating cost, I mean, we used to spend $10 a minute to make mm. that same phone call. And now we're talking about uh, about 75 cents, which in, in some cases is cheaper than a mobile phone call. Absolutely. So it's, uh, it's quite a big delta. Actually. How are you seeing Australian businesses actually using satellite communications today? Who's using it? Why? Where? Yeah, so, so the, the satellite business has certainly uh, long been used by the governments and uh, military and people like that. But of course, uh, in this market, resources is a huge user of satellites. So they expect to be able to turn up anywhere and, and examine uh, oil or gas or, or rock samples and so on and be able to get that information back. And in this day and age where exploration is, uh, is the key kickoff point for those guys where they know where they're going to get their next um, income from, mm -hmm. they need to get that information back faster. So they're, they're taking more satellite equipment with them these days to make sure they can recover the results faster and, and make decisions about whether they should continue drilling or, or extracting a particular new site or, or move on to another site. But also, even, even the average traveller now, um, people uh, take great delight in going bush and, and having a look at Australia and, and even uh, parts of uh, Southeast Asia, for example. And the technology has become so small and, and cheap and easy to use that they're all taking those devices with them. In some cases, it might be just to make emergency calls, but in some cases, to be able to call the grandkids or someone and say, you wouldn't believe where we are and you should see what we just saw. Mm. So uh, it's really sort of become part of people's lives, actually. It's not like it's so unique anymore. So it's in those more, it's still being used in the more remote areas, basically, where you can't get service from your Optus or your Telstra so easily on the, on the, uh, the kind of the, the, the consumer kind of phones. In that, in that sort of technology, that is yeah. the case. Uh, certainly in some of the business and government customers, they, uh, telecommunications are so important these days that they can't uh, take the risk that they might be able to get a connection. So we, we've done work for some customers where at some incidents their 3G network is, is not as reliable as they'd like or perhaps it's a bit uh, too busy and so they need a guaranteed way to still be able to get out and satellite gives you that. I mean the, the satellite technology today is, is basically like a 3G tower but in the sky mm. and so you cover about a third of the Earth's surface with, with one spacecraft mm. and that gives you a guarantee. The, the normal satellite operator has to be a very very high reliability operator, the most reliable so it's the sort of connection you always get after everything else has been blown over, mm. knocked over or saturated with use, a satellite connection always works. So where does the growth for the industry come from from here, I suppose? You've already brought the costs down dramatically and obviously it's much easier to use and all of that, but from here, where does it go? Well, certainly one of the things that's really changed about is a thing we call M2M or machine to machine, and this is the ability to connect computers to computers to make decisions, and we're currently doing some work for the Bureau of Meteorology around a whole lot of remote weather stations that are going to continuously feed information to their supercomputer and do things like climate modelling and so on. And they weren't able to do that before. I mean, this is a, a big step change in terms of the ability to access that information anywhere in the world at a price point that's acceptable to the customer. Mm. And uh, we're seeing some devices, I mean, such as uh, yeah. equipment like some of these little transponder devices. Mm. And uh, these are very, very small, low-cost pieces of equipment that allow you to reach out to any piece of technology anywhere in the world. So, so practically, practically speaking, tell us how that, that white blob works. Okay, the, <laughs> the white blob, the little transponder here, it's got a, it's got a GPS in it yeah. and, uh, and it has a, a satellite transmit receive system in it. They're worth like $500, they're very mm -hmm. cheap. And you can attach that to, say, a vehicle and you would be able to know, well, where is the vehicle today? Whether it you know, went from Britain across to Germany or further or in this end of the world, one end of Australia to the other. Uh, you would know how fast it went, you would yeah. know uh, how much fuel it consumed and so on. Okay. In this weather monitoring area, we're more talking about wind speed, uh, water temperature, water rises and falls and so on. And so that sort of technology allows these computer modelling systems to be able to generate the information much mm. faster and much more accurately. So when you have that situation where machines can communicate with machines mm -hmm. and get that amazing connectability, I suppose, um, that you're seeing, do we see a point where we just do away with 
cable and, and, and fiber optics and all of that. Is that become the, the ultimate yeah. growth or not? I mean, what, one of the things are... are the uh, restrictions then? Yes, yeah, the, the, of course, the, one of the big things is that all radio communications uses spectrum. So we need radio frequency uh, spectrum to yes. be able to do things. And uh, certainly the light spectrum is much bigger than the radio spectrum. So fiber optic is still going to offer us many, many more uh, options in terms of being able to get bandwidth through and so on. Okay. But of course, very expensive to lay, a very labour intensive to lay, and uh, not the sort of thing you can suddenly get up in the morning and say, I think I'll have a fibre uh, yeah. connection there, sort of thing. Whereas in the satellite game, you can get up any of the week you like and, and get a connection straight away. So they're, they're, they're in fact quite, uh, quite complementary. We, we have a very broad satellite network of our own and we have fibre optic connections into the satellite earth stations that talk to the satellites mm -hmm. and that's how we pull the information off the satellite and give it back to the customers. Yeah. So they're, they're very much a, uh, a combination, they're not, not one or the other basically. Oh fantastic, great to hear about that from you today Todd, thanks so much. No worries, thank Todd McDonald, CEO and founder of TC Communications. Well the confectionery giant Cadbury has become the launch partner of Blipper, a small a smartphone.